Shot 2 Game Review. It has been 10 years since the events of the first game. Rapture is still there, but there's a new person who's trying to run things. Her name is Lamb, Sophia Lamb. And she doesn't believe in Ryan's theory of individuality conquers all. She believes in unity. She takes... you You are a big daddy and she takes your little sister from you and leaves you for dead. Yeah, that party is a bit cliche, I suppose. Anyway, you wake up and... ten years later and you have to find your little sister, called Eleanor. She is connected to you, and you can't leave Rapture until you've found her. You can't leave her side. And she is also trapped in Rapture until you come bring her out. The basic concept of, you know, this kind of excessive response to an already excessive ideology makes perfect sense. When, you know, historically, when someone has gone for just no rules and, you know, let's just satisfy all our needs right here, right now, the opposite happens. There is an equal opposite reaction, I think the saying is, you know. So, this whole cult that Sophia Lamb has established it makes perfect sense. You know, it's all about unity. It's all about, you know, we all have to live up to this responsibility. And it also makes sense that people would go along with it because, you know, under any rule there are, there are unhappy people and someone with good rhetoric can, you know, get them onto their side and then make it spread. You know, there's always the whole, the grass is greener, and the, I, I do believe there is something inside us, some natural urge to just take orders, to just not have to deal with responsibility, and, you know, just be told what to do, so everything will work out. The game is much more fun and challenging than the first one. The first one, I still maintain, was essentially a first-person shooter that happened to have some superpowers. In this one, the superpowers get, you know, hypercharged, and it's faster. There's more, there are more enemy types, there's more variety to the gameplay, and with how both you and the enemies have superpowers, and this time the superpowers make more of an impact than the first one, both the enemies and yours, it winds up feeling like a bit of you know, Battle of the Titans kind of thing, you know. And there are some fantastic battles between you and your enemies in this. The climax is excellent. And the the ability to now use both plasmids and weapons at the same time makes a lot of sense. It makes it, you know, it, it means that you also do have to, you know, use them at the same time. There is still a lot of streamlining going on. In fact, this is slightly more streamlined in some ways than the first one. I think Going with going by this and Kane and Lynch Dead Men, I have to say streamlining does not take away all the risk as long as there are guns and bullets in the game. I think that's really the key. When there aren't, it can take away all the risk. But you know, like with Assassin's Creed and the newer Prince of Persia games. But with them, there's always the aiming, usually always, if that makes sense, and the whole thing, and you have to avoid getting hit by bullets and such and such. And make sure you have enough ammo, things like that. Guns are just great in games. 
the environments are quite interesting and it's again, it really sells that you're under the ocean. There is a bit less of seeing the ocean through windows than the first one, I would say. One thing about the game is that it is quite short. I completed this in a day. 10 or 12 hours of playing, and that was kind of it. On the plus side, after that, it does have multiplayer. In fact, I, I would urge you to start multiplayer first, because it seems like multiplayer renders your save games unusable, your first ones, because it updates the entire game and then you can't use the old ones. Fortunately, I hadn't played for that long by the time I tried multiplayer. Multiplayer has your average first-person shooter modes. It's got free-for-all, team free-for-all, capture the flag, hold the flag, the flag being a little sister, and it has, you know, I think it's domination, you know, like in Unreal Tournament games, you know, control points on the map. It's quite streamlined. It doesn't seem like any one person is hosting it. It's, you know, the Windows Live kind of thing. So you do need to, you need, you know, Windows Live membership, but it is free to play. And it seems to even out the teams and more or less place you on in matches where you, you know, are playing with people of the same rank. The higher the rank, the more weapons, plasmids, gene tonics you can use and you know the more you have access to also and the more you can alter your appearance things like that and there are a lot of unlockables in multiplayer also that give you excuse me extra atom which helps you get a higher rank all in all it's a lot of fun they really use the concept well and yeah, if you like the concept, I would definitely recommend it. I'm not even sure you need to have played the first one first, because it really does kind of reintroduce you to pretty much everything.